Well, we're getting near the end of the course. This is, in fact, the last chapter. I've shown you all of the programs that I'm going to show you. All the things like Vi and LS and Copy and Uname and so forth. We've gotten to the end of all of those. There are no new programs to learn. Instead, in this final chapter, we concentrate on the shell itself. And we concentrate specifically on how to customize the behavior of the shell to make your shell existence more efficient, more comfortable, and more user-friendly. The first thing that we're going to look at is how to modify which actual shell you find yourself in when you log in. Perhaps when your account was created, you were given the just the regular born shell, slash bin, slash sh, which is a perfectly reasonable shell, but it doesn't have a lot of extra user-friendly features that, say, the bash has. So let's assume, for example, that you want to change your shell from one to another. Maybe you need to change it to the seashell. But let's assume it's, you're going to change it to the bash. Then, well, how do you go about it? Well, the first thing to know is it's actually quite difficult to go about that if you don't have the root permissions or super user privileges. The ability to change user settings is a system administrator privilege, typically, and it's unlikely that you'll be able to do it yourself. So you may have to find out who the system administrator is, mail them or phone them and ask them to change your shell for you. So that's pretty much all there is to say about that. But if you do have the ability to change your shell, if you do have the privileges or the permission to do so, then I'll just quickly show you how to do that. You can try one of the following. There is a program called User Mod. Now that's a fairly straightforward program to use if you have it on your system, and some Unixes do not offer that. It should be fairly self-explanatory, so there's a decent place to start. Now, if you don't have that program, then you're simply going to have to find out which program it is that is used on your particular version of Unix to add, delete, and modify users. So fire up that program, select the Modify User option, and look for the user's login shell. That should be fairly easy to spot, and simply change it. Now, if there is no such program, or you can't find it, then there is a last resort, and I don't recommend doing this unless you absolutely have to. There is an actual file called slash etc slash passwd. That's usually pronounced etc password, for obvious reasons. Now, if you have permission to, you'll be able to open up that file and find the line that corresponds to your username and change the shell. Let me show you what that looks like. I'll now uh, vi slash etc slash password and here I am in the file. Notice that this is a publicly readable file. I'll prove that. I'll just do exclamation mark. I'm going to get a sh run a shell program ls minus l of this current file, the percent sign and it shows me that the file is nearly a megabyte in size and that it is readable by everybody. Okay, fair enough. So now if I wanted to change my shell, then I would type in the forward slash and then my username, mvirtue, and there is mvirtue. And then I would move along the line until I found my shell, which is slash bin slash bash. And I would simply change it to something else, slash bin slash sh. Now notice that my Vi program is giving me a little warning here saying that I'm changing a read-only file. And that means, of course, that I'm not going to be able to save these changes back out to slash etc password, no matter how hard I try. I can even try colon w exclamation mark and can't open the file for writing. I would have been very surprised if I could. But you get the general idea. And if you do have per permission to modify this file, say, for example, your root, then changing your shell is as simple as that. Now, finally, if all of those fail, in other words, you don't have system administrator privileges and you can't even get in contact with your system administrator, then there is a final option. It, it requires you to edit your, the file called .profile. That's the word profile with a full stop in front of it. It's a hidden file. 
it'll always be in your home directory and then you add a line to the end of that file that reads exec space and then the new shell that you wish to use for example you might type in um, exec space slash bin slash csh for the C shell now this has the effect of as soon as the dot profile file has been read and processed the shell that you are using terminates and is replaced by the shell that you've specified that's what exec actually does we'll learn more about exec a little later on in this module but that is a uh, certainly an option for anybody that will work no matter what you don't have to have any special privileges to do that it's not obviously the finest or most efficient method but it will work